Hey, it's Robert with Hush Performance and welcome to another edition of How to Swap. Hey, thanks guys for checking in with us. Today we're going to be doing an auto to manual in your 92 to 95 Honda Civic. Probably the most popular car among the golden era guys. There's probably a ton of videos on how to do this, but none of them from me. A lot of guys like how detailed I get and I hope that I can provide that information. So we'll start off with our chassis. Uh, this is a 95 Civic that we got off at auction. We got this several years ago. I think we might have paid five to $700 for this Ford door off of auction it was not running when we picked it up but check it out it is really clean super clean and we hung on to this one with our dear lives the ex is going to come with the vtech it's going to come with the short gear ratio if it was manual i don't know what the issue was with this particular automatic transmission was already coming off as if they were getting ready to service it we're hoping that the engine runs we've been collecting parts on this one for a lot of years so let's go over what we'll need if it's not obvious, we're well, going to need a transmission. You're going to need a slave cylinder. You're going to need at least a clutch pedal. Manual shift linkage from a 92-95 Honda Civic. You're going to need a clutch master cylinder from a 92-2000 to 2000 Honda Civic. You'll need a clutch from for a 92-2000 to 2000 Honda Civic. You'll need a flywheel from a 92-2000 to 2000 Honda Civic. You'll need the flywheel and pressure plate bolts from a 92 to 2000 Honda Civic. This transmission is out of a 96 plus Civic. These will work in the 92, 95 cars. The clutch line 96 to 2000 models looks like this. It's a bit different from what the EGs look like. If you were to look at a Honda parts breakdown, you'll see that the OEM clutch line on this one wraps around the frame and the firewall. You don't really need all of that. What you could do is like what we're going to do you could use a stainless steel braided line from the clutch master all the way down to the slave cylinder. Now when it comes down to the pedals, it is kind of up to you. Some guys will just get the clutch pedal. There actually is some clearance there. The manual pedal moves over a bit so there's not a, you're not going to accidentally hit the brake while trying to hit the clutch. You'll need a manual ECU. If you've been living under a rock and don't understand the 92-95 Civics, these ECUs are gold. And lastly, this right here. This is an auto to manual EG conversion from Haasport. This bracket on the body changes. It's a little bit higher and to clear the transmission, transmission's much more bulkier on an auto car than a manual car. So to compensate that, Haasport makes their own aluminum motor mount that is raised to meet the factory steel here. So back in the day, guys would just drill this out and go to Honda and buy a manual one and then re-weld it. But many of you guys aren't welders or don't have a welder, don't have access to one. And so the conversion from Haasport is a bolt-on affair. We are Haasport dealers. We're essentially making this video to show you what you need to do. And then when you need one of these mounts, please purchase it from us because we went through all the trouble to show you how to do this so that we can sell some motor mounts. So please give us some love and to give some love back to you. So not only did we create this video for you, but we're, all gonna give, we're also gonna give you a video discount. Make sure to use the discount in the description below. So if you hadn't noticed, we already prepped this car, the, trend, the automatic transmission's out, and essentially we're ready to put the manual stuff in there. Okay, we got the rear T-bracket out, but you saw that our motor mount was busted. Right there would be a perfect time to replace this. I was prepared to put brand new polyurethane billet mounts in here from Haasport as well with that auto to manual. And I believe that I had a set in stock. So you guys out there, if you're looking to replace all of the mounts, the EG stock seems to be the logical choice for you, except if you have what I do, which is a 95 Civic, then you'll discover that it's got a three bolt driver side mount. And when that happens, it changes the kit to a DC2. DC2 is the 94 to 01 
Integra the B series has the same bolt pattern as the D series so it can get confusing what you should do is open your hood look to see if you have a two bolt a driver side block bracket or a three bolt driver side block bracket and if you're doing an auto to manual that changes things also so there are kits available for manual two bolts there are kits for manual three bolts then there are kits for two bolts auto and three bolt auto so just make sure that when you open your hood look to that driver side mount make sure that it's the right one and then if you're doing an auto to manual make sure that you that you get one that has the automatic transmission mount that way you're not going to piece something together like we are the rear t bracket is actually the exact same part number as the auto 92 to 95 honda civic this one we had out and decided just to sandblast and powder coat just so that it looked good. The mounts qualify as a stock replacement and are intended to use the original hardware. The point of me showing you putting the mount in is to show you the tool that I'm using to do that with all the stuff in here. My go-to tool is generally a flex head ratchet just like this. I rarely need a straight fixed head ratchet, I mean almost never, because there's generally never a scenario where you're completely straight on a bolt head and you don't need uh, some kind of flex in it. And so I just never see myself, I never end up just grabbing my fixed ratchets, even though I have it. So right here, I have one of the extra long ones, and I, this is, I use this almost all of the time. I have the shorter ones, but I rarely use it, just because I'm always needing to torque something on or off. This is the most versatile tool in my box. Because this rear T-bracket is the exact same part number as the manual, Removing this bracket or the mount would not be necessary in most cases, but if you were doing what I was doing, then it would be in terms of replacing the mount. And because we knew that we were going to be doing that, we put this nice one that was refurbished back in here. This is stuff that we do here. Like um, we actually source stuff like this, like with the EKs, for example, we'll do manual uh, rear brackets a lot uh, and uh, torque mounts. We'll sandblast them and uh, powder coat them and then resell them on our eBay store. Why little bolts? How do you know if you got the right ones? The automatics will say AT right on them. The manuals will have a little dot there. And so if you're confused about what you'd have, like if you got one that says 23, that's a B-series manual flywheel. If you got one that says F12, that is a K-series. There's a total of six OEM flywheel bolts that you'll need. Then you'll need a total of six pressure plate bolts. This clutch disc is something that we had from another project. And this one came off of a used motor, this pressure plate. All right, the flywheel is on. You'll need to torque it to 87 foot-pounds via the internet. Okay, and you see I just put a number two Phillips screwdriver in there and what that's going to help me do is keep the flywheel locked in place while I'm trying to torque it down. If you use a smaller one, it'll probably bend it. So while I'm doing this, someone's going to be like, hey man, you didn't resurface the flywheel. And yes, you're right. I also didn't replace the pilot bearing or the rear main seal. This is going to be one of those situations where um, do as I say, not as I do and whoever says that is absolutely correct. You should replace the pilot bearing and the rear main seal and resurface your flywheel before doing this. All right, once you get them all torqued on, go around them one more time. This is similar to what you would do with a wheel. You torque them in a star pattern and then go them once more to confirm that you got them all. All right. So if I gotta take some heat for some internet trolls about that situation, it is what it is and I'll gladly accept it. I got too many cars in the shop that don't run that I'm tired of pushing around. I need one of these cars to run and this was the closest one to getting 
on the road that I could actually monetize off as well with this video. After you snug up your pressure plate bolts, then you'll set your torque wrench to 19 foot-pounds and like the flywheel you'll want to turn in one solid motion not ratcheting back and forth because it changes the torque you'll do this in a star pattern as well And then if you do it right, your alignment tool should pull out with ease and you'll be able to bring in the transmission for install. I regularly, I regularly, I regularly, regularly, I regularly, <laughs> I usually do this by myself anyways and I work on the floor so hopefully this will represent what you do at home. I got the transmission on a jack and I'll just lift it up until the point where it will stab into the clutch. Your auto starter will not work either. You're gonna need a front wheel drive D-series. Now is an easier time to get it in. The transmission's down, there's lots of room to work. Unboxing will reveal the point of this project. It looks like it comes with a bolt and a washer. And there it is. So real quick, we'll just compare it to the non auto manual mount. And there it is. Look, you can see the height difference right there. And so that's what you'd be working against. And even if you wanted to re-drill the bracket that's on the body, there is not enough material for you to even begin to, ch to achieve that. Looks like both of these have the new urethane. It's called Bulletproof. This is a urethane and Kevlar infused bushing. Uh, it's brand new uh, from What I'll do here is I'm gonna set the mount inside the bracket, and then I'm gonna bring the engine up to the mount. By yourself, you just push. Try to widen the studs. There we go. We're getting it. So the one bolt that it comes with will replace the one that goes on top then you're going to be reusing the other two nuts. Uh, you can tighten this up probably just all of the way and then the engine will swing like this. And so underneath the car, you'll be able to move the engine to align the rear T-bracket uh, with the transmission and the engine. Because the rear engine bracket is the same as the manual, you'll just reuse the hardware from the original T-bracket as well. This one is the one that went up top and then these two are gonna go in the back and like I said this engine should rock see like that that should be enough for you to be able to get all of those started as far as hardware goes again the starter one of the bolts from the original automatic starter will work but you'll still need another bolt like this and this goes underneath the starter also as far as the upper transmission bolts all of the ones on top will work but you'll be left with needing two on the bottom you'll need one underneath the slave cylinder and then there's another one near the rear T-bracket right here. Those are gonna be the same size as the ones up top. Now the inspection plate would be up to you. It would be a good idea to have this. This transmission came off an EK and their inspection plate is a, is a bit different, especially on EX models, which that this one came off of an EX. They have aluminum brackets that bolt to the block. And on a, on a Y8, the oil pan is aluminum also, so it's, pretty much different here. If you're gonna get an inspection plate, you make sure to wanna to get it off of a 92 to 95 Civic. The shift linkage is next. This can come off of any 92 to 2000 Civic. Make sure to grab the bushing here on the backside. There will be some 12 millimeter bolts from the factory that you should grab. There is a roll pin that goes through the transmission that you should have. Let's just assume you don't have the OEM parts here and here, back here, which I'm not sure I have the OEMs either. We can put a bolt and a nut through here and find some sizes that will fit back here. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll just let you know what sizes we end up having to use because chances are 
you'll end up just buying this if you don't pull it yourself off of somebody and chances are they're not selling it with hardware either. The hardware we chose is going to be 340 millimeter length 8 by 125 bolts. They'll fit through that bushing up front and then the one in the back really well. We'll finish it off with the 35 millimeter bolts, 8 millimeter by 125. That will fit right through the linkage. And we're going to add a washer and lock nut to make sure that that doesn't back off. We had already removed the pedal assemblies out of this chassis and we already removed the automatic shifter. Don't get rid of the shifter just yet because we have to figure out the neutral safety switch and the key lockout. But this right here, what you're seeing, this hole, this is for the auto shifter, shifter cable to go through and this is bracket that it bolts onto. But it also, is so it bolts onto up here. So there's a nut there and then there's another nut right there we gotta get off. And this plate will drop down. We need to get that down so that we can bring in the shifter. The linkage is bolted on and it's routed underneath the exhaust tunnel. Now in this body, these right here, I don't believe are on the EF or DAs. And so you're just kind of guessing where they go. When you look at this bushing right here, you can see the centers and it looks like it's going to line perfectly. And so now that we have a good idea about where it needs to be, I'm just gonna use my center punch and just strike it right there in the center. I'm by myself and so I'm going to drop the bolts down this way so that I can align them with the bushing down there and then I'll add the nuts and figure out how I'm going to tighten both sides. There's a will, there's a way. Oh, she's shifting nice. All the gears. And we're looking pretty centered right here. Pretty dope. All right, so now you see these gaping holes right here. So this is for the automatic shifter cable, goes through the floor. Then this thing is misshaped from what a manual would look like. A manual would be a lot more round. That right there is exposed right to the elements, heat, rain and so the only thing that we really could do besides putting on the original plastics that cover that is use some foil tape or you're just making your own steel and having to weld that i mean that's that's beyond what a lot of guys or people in the garage have are capable of doing so because i was tired of doing that or being embarrassed of of the options that we had I came up with this thing right here and it's I call it a shifter cover plate and that's exactly what it's going to do. It's essentially a piece of sheet metal that's going to go over that and look as you can see those original holes there it lines up with and so those are the holes that would hold that bracket up and the shifter down and so now you can see how it's going to cover all of that. I mean it's pretty trick right? I mean, you don't have to do anything. I. <laughs> I developed this a couple of years ago. I've, we've sold quite a few of these. If you guys are new to the channel because of the EG, I, we're just jumping into the EG market. And that's probably why you haven't seen this yet. I've been marketing this to a lot of the EF guys that are following us already and because of all the products that I use. But here we can see one used in the EG and it will align. We're hoping that we can help you out with that now that we've been able to update uh, the chassis that we make product for. You know, that's got to make you feel good when you got something like that, man. It's like, it's almost like you knew what you are doing. Moving to the pedal assembly, uh, it's going to be easier if you drop the steering column. Matter of fact, I'm not sure how you'll do it if you did not. Right away we have this module. That module bolts on to where our clutch would go and there is a cover plate that is there on the from the factory, so you don't have to drill any holes in the firewall. We simply remove the nuts that are holding this a module on and then the cover plate will pull out from the bay. There's our cover plate. It's really nice. Some vehicles don't have any holes at all and you have to figure out how to drill them out. So there's that and that's for our clutch master. 
you're gonna need a pedal assembly out of an EG. But there is a difference between the manual assembly and the pedal assembly. The way that the throttle cable attaches to the pedals. Now we don't have a manual throttle cable, so what we're going to do is swap this pedal over to the manual side. The reservoir can mount right there on the shock tower. There are provisions for it. So just make sure to grab the hardware. Also to help you get the pedal assembly in, I moved the, the booster back a little bit. That's gonna give you some working room. You'll probably be happy that you did that. Hopefully you have the room here, like if it's swapped or something like that, if you have a big intake manifold, that would make things difficult. You know, but honestly, if your car is automatic, you probably don't have a swap in it yet. Wiring can be problematic for some people. They just don't understand it. We could turn some wrenches, but to see how the circuits work and understand all that stuff, I could totally understand. And so really figuring all this out just came from just understanding the, the, the function and the, the function of this mechanism. So if you're just sitting in the car and you go to try to turn the key, it won't, it won't let you. Uh, you can step on the brake with the key and the ignition, then all of a sudden, you can push this button down and it will move. The brake pedal is doing, it closes the circuit on this actuator when you're pushing the pedal down and it moves this out of the way. At the same time, it's also the neutral safety switch. These are the two power wires right here. So what will happen is we'll look for these two light wires right here, or these two colors. And if we don't see them on the other side, we're just gonna look and match where these two go so that then we could so that we can then loop them together on the other side. See these two right here? So on the chassis side, we'll literally just uh, splice them together to get it powered up. Say you forgot which plug was the neutral safety switch on your shifter and which plug was for the lights that are for uh, like this, the menu here. You just line it up here like I had to and saw, and I'm just looking at to see which one was closer. So it looks like this furthest one right here was for the lights. So that's gonna be some kind of 12 volt power, most likely. And then this means that's my neutral safety switch. This might give you a better idea of what I was talking about. Essentially what I'm doing is looping them together, just like how you see here. I wanted to, uh, I would cut these back and then solder those two together. And then also the same uh, hot wires over here that's going to close our circuit as well. It would essentially be the same thing. We got it buttoned up. We got the transmission full of oil. We got our jump box set up. Our clutch line was ran, and this is probably the easiest clutch line or master cylinder bleeds I've ever had. I'm not just saying that because it's our clutch line, but like I put the fluid in here. We crack the bleed screw on the slave cylinder down here and it started pouring out there. I mean, I didn't have to do anything. It was all gravity bled. I bled this by myself. Our clutch line here is multiple pieces. So we have a banjo over there at the master cylinder with a banjo bolt with a nice 90 degree. It tucks underneath the intake manifold, comes over the transmission, and then goes into our slave cylinder down here. And sometimes clutch lines out there will have a fixed fitting there but ours is a two-piece, so that in the future, you decide that you need to change that out uh, for, let's say, a hydraulic throw-out bearing. In the future, you don't need a whole new clutch line. All you have to do is just change the adapter out for whatever you plan to use it, use it on. As far as oil goes, we're using standard 1030. That's essentially what goes in here. You could use Honda MTF. And we go through right through the breather. We got this stepped hose that we use and we hang over here. It's worked out really well for us. It's about just over two quarts to fill this. If you can hear that, it sounds like we got power. The key turned over like it's supposed to. That means the lockout worked. And if we keep the neutral safety switch like that, uh, it will start in gear. So you wanna make sure that it's out of gear. And Ultimately, what you could end up doing is these two wires, you could feed up to the clutch pedal and then add these two wires to a switch and you would have a neutral safety switch at the pedal. So that's entirely up to you. All right, so now what we're gonna do is turn, turn it over to see if we have power and that would confirm that we have the wire, these two power wires that we have jumped right here, that would confirm that they work. Look at that, they work. I could heard the fuel pump. 
you know, it's been a long time since this started, so I don't know how much fuel is in there. It doesn't look like there's much. But let's just see if it will turn over. Whoa! It's running! Check that out. I've had this car for years. I checked the oil before I started it, and it works. Listen to that. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's just see now that if it goes into gear. So that means we confirmed that the power is working. We confirmed that the neutral safety works. Now we're gonna see if it goes into gear. We're going into gear with it running. Check that out, that is, ex is exciting. I've owned this car for over three years. I had no idea whether it was going to run or not. I think it was like five to seven hundred dollars what we spent on this thing. It was halfway taken apart, automatic transmission, slapped in a junkyard Y8 transmission in here. You saw it from the beginning. Now I think to finalize this video, we'll figure out where the high idle is coming from and we'll do a test drive. One last thing I forgot from the parts list was to grab the boot. We'll have to remember to get one of those from the junkyard. And I can't remember exactly if the auto shifter uh, console is different than the manual. So I'll look into that as well. What well, while we're there, we can get the rubber boot off of a manual. EG is it will fit in between uh, the steel and uh, the exhaust tunnel. And that should close all of that up. And then of course with the boot, it'll be finalized. And then, you know what? I also forgot that I need a shift knob. This thing is totally rad and clean. Yes. That's, all we did was hose it down. High pressure, heated, and this is what the results was. No chemicals. It always seems like the ones that are dusty super super dusty and may have never been detailed clean up the most it's like the dust preserves it it looks so good under here man all right so i said that that blade was fast i mean it was but it's still a little bit of air in there i have to pump it a little bit we also have that six puck competition uh disc in here i'm not sure about the pressure plate the pressure plate feels okay actually it's a little more stiff than i thought it would be but um, moving, moving the car, I can feel that clutch kind of catching a little bit, but right now it feels good. And this is a relatively easy swap. I mean, it's essentially bolt-in. Now, as far as wiring go, that's probably like always the hardest thing or people, for people, one of the hardest things for people to understand or to know what to do. And as far as the engine harness goes, I'm trying to think about the engine harness on this car. Um, it looked like it was manual. There wasn't any extra wires for any solenoids. And I haven't done enough of these uh, swaps to remember how many plugs plug into an automatic engine harness. But there was only one extra and that was for the reverse light switch, which on our transmission was broke off. So it looks like this harness would just plug right in. But I don't have any check engine lights whatsoever. I am running a, an automatic ECU still. This is a P28, this is a Z6 engine. I don't have any check lights. I don't have any drive, uh, drive lights on the dash either. But as of right now, it feels good. It is surging a little bit, but that has to do with the engine, not so much the manual conversion, I believe. It's been sitting a long time, and if I had any guess anything that um, the fast idle valve is stuck closed, so we'll have to take that apart and check it out, but the car feels stock, even with the replacement engine mounts. We're running 62 up in the rear, and then we have that bulletproof at the transmission, and it feels fine. It feels really good. It doesn't feel like there's much engine movement. There's not a whole lot of vibration in the car. The reason that the engine is loud is because the cat, uh, we cut the cat off and sold it off because I thought we were going to get rid of this car, but I decided to keep it. So now I got to track down a cat. But dang, this thing feels great, especially for not running for as long as it had. And I just turned the AC on right now. Uh oh. 
and it feels cold. This thing even has AC, that's what's up. But this car is pretty much roadworthy right now, man. I'm stoked. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our other how to swap, how to yard videos right there on our YouTube channel. I hope this was informative. And like always, happy tuning.